Hello everyone. Selamat malam saya ucapkan kepada semua. Welcome Hi. back to Chat with Optometrist. Uh, this time we are already in episode 5 and tonight uh, together with me uh, there's three panelists. Uh, the first one is our Association of Malaysian Optometrist President, uh, Mr. Ahmad. Mr. Ahmad, cakap hi sikit. Hi, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi And we also have MOSCO, uh, Mr. Jun Yuan. Say hi, please. Hi, good evening, guys. Good evening. And we also have another AMO Exco, which is uh, Mr. Prakash. Say hi. 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 Good evening, all. All right, guys. So today, today topic for Chit Chat with Optometry, Say hi. Uh, episode 5 is Lazy Eyes ataupun Mata Malas. Uh, so like uh, I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, mata malas ni adakah sebab orang tu malas dia menyebabkan mata malas? Kita nak tahu dan that's why kita akan jawab soalan-soalan. Apa tu mata malas? Apa punca mata malas? Bagaimana nak menangani mata malas? Dan siapa yang boleh bantu anda jika ada orang yang ada mata malas? Uh, so soalan-soalan ni kita akan jawab today. So of course, uh, the first questions about uh, lazy eyes is about the definitions ataupun maksud mata malas tu sendiri. Yeah. So untuk ini saya rasa yang paling sesuai untuk jawab of course our Mr. President, Mr. Ahmad. So uh, Ahmad, uh, apa yang dimaksudkan ataupun yang dinafinasikan sebagai mata malas? Mata malas okay. yang berayu media. Uh, silakan. Okay. Untuk uh, permulaan, uh, biasanya kalau kita pergi ke praktik otomatik atau kedai cik mata, kita kalau bila cek mata je ada je orang tu kata eh mata awak ni mata malas ha. power tinggi je terus dia kata mata malas MLUPR, lazy eye macam-macam eh, kalau nak tahu sebenarnya mata malas ataupun eh, lemon termnya dan eh, dalam bahasa Inggeris kita panggil MLUPR mata malas ni berlaku apabila eh, ma satu mata tu tak dapat melihat dengan jelas Apabila kita dah bagi uh, kuasa refraksi yang terbaik, yang optimum tapi dia tak dapat melihat uh, vision yang sepatutnya 646 tu itu kita kategorikan dia mata malas maknanya bila kita dah bagi kuasa yang penuh ataupun kita dah uh, bagi kantor lekap ke ataupun dah buat operasi tapi uh, still tak dapat perlihatan yang terbaik 646 itu kita katakan dia mata malas dan kebiasaannya mata malas ni terjadi uh, pada sat, salah satu mata uh, ja, uh, kan jarang tak berlaku kat dua-dua mata sebab dia mata ni dia kan uh, satu mata akan nampak terang dan satu mata lagi dia kabur dan bila keadaan ni berlaku yang uh, mata yang terang ni dia akan super impose pada mata yang kabur jadi secara tak langsung mata yang kabur tu kan jadi mata malas dia akan terabai lama-lama sebab kita, kita ingat mata kita melihat terang tapi sebenarnya ada satu mata yang tak nampak dengan jelas ha, yang tu mata tu yang jadi lazy eye ataupun M Melayu Pia ok itu saja daripada saya Syuk mungkin ya, boleh tambah yang lain baik thank you Ahmad thank you so much untuk uh, definasi M Melayu Pia ataupun mata malas So, uh, optometris optometris selalunya akan sebut uh, mata malas ni sebagai perkataan dia emblyopia ataupun of course kita sebut mata malas tapi sometimes people akan uh, a bit confused about uh, mata malas uh, sebab orang ingat budak-budak uh, tu yang malas it's, it's not kan uh, mata malas ni is about conditions di mana macam Mr. Ahmad cakap tadi uh, dia um, tak boleh melihat dengan jelas ataupun huruf-huruf yang kecil pada catah huruf tu uh, because of uh, dia punya connections ataupun the, the the wiring lah some sort of dia tak boleh nak nampak so we need to push or we need to try to to make uh, children yang ada MLUPR ni kalau kalau nak betulkan nanti kita akan talk about the treatment ataupun how we want to manage MLUPR ni later tapi uh, selain daripada definasi tu Uh, tadi Ahmad ada cakap penyakit apa semua tu so uh, kita nak tahu uh, what is the cause yeah? what is the cause of uh, emblyopia um, 
what is causing uh, lazy eyes and um, uh, perhaps uh, is it uh, certain diseases? Is there uh, certain uh, eye problems uh, that can cause uh, embryopia? So I want to pass this question to Prakash. Uh, mm -hmm. Prakash, maybe uh, you want to you know enlighten our audience. Uh, yep. What is the causes of embryopia? Please. Right, right. Okay, thanks, Shukri. Before we look into the cause, kita kena tahu macam mana benda ni boleh berjadi mata malas. So, kita kena tahu when a baby born, okay, out of the womb, the eye, the eyeball is already there. The shape of the eyeball is already there. The lens is already there. Semua uh, part dalam mata tu semua dah ada. Cuma fungsinya tu belum 100% lengkap. So, untuk memastikan mata kita berfungsi dengan lebih baik, dia bergantung pada learning, you know. As your eye is growing, your, it's actually learning through the environment. So, um, kita kata pertumbuhan mata tu, fungsi tu, still going on from the moment anak tu lahir sampai umur ke uh, 10 ke 12 tahun. So, both the eye and the brain is working together. They are learning from the environment. So, bila uh, mata ni sebagai kamera, uh, siapa yang lihat adalah otak. Mata kita ni sebagai kamera. They just Terima input, dia hantar ke otak. So, otak yang melihat. So, untuk otak berfungsi dengan lebih baik, kamera mesti bagus. Right? So, bila, um, if let's say something is wrong with your eye, for an example, uh, mungkin katakan you ada rabun jauh yang terlalu tinggi. Kanak-kanak tu mungkin ada rabun jauh yang terlalu tinggi. Menyebabkan image yang sampai ke dalam mata kita ataupun kamera kita tu tak berapa jelas. So, bila tak berapa jelas, otak tak dapat input yang sepenuhnya. Right? So, bila jadi macam ni, otak akan ingat, oh, maybe kita boleh lihat sampai sini sahaja. Katakan penglihatan kabo. Okay? So, otak akan assume. Otak akan assume, this is my capability. This is my eye and the brain system punya capability. So, bermaksud, kita boleh tengok sampai sini sahaja. So, that's why kita panggil mata malas. Sebenarnya bukan uh, mata yang malas. Otak pun dah malas sekali. The whole system. There is a connection between the eye and the brain. So, punca utama adalah uh, rabun jauh ataupun rabun dekat yang terlalu tinggi ataupun power silau. Okay? Itu punca pertama. Punca kedua, mungkin ada mata juling ataupun screen in English kita panggil. So, bila mata kita dua-dua straight, kita boleh nampak. Tetapi kalau katakan satu mata tu dah juling, keluar ataupun masuk ke dalam. So, bila benda ni berlaku, mata yang dah ada juling tu tak ada input. So, kamera yang dah juling tu tak ada input. So, uh, otak akan mula ignore mata yang dah juling tu. So, juling sama ada, uh, kita ada banyak jenis juling. Dan severity juga kita kena tengok. Juling kecil, juling besar ke macam mana. So, mana-mana juling pun boleh menyebabkan uh, mata malas. Itu nombor dua. Nombor tiga, kita kena tengok sama ada kamera you katakan kamera you semua bagus tetapi lens dah rosak dalam kamera. Katakan lens dah pecah. So, bila lens dah pecah, lampu tak boleh masuk. Ataupun katakan you ada kamera tapi you lupa nak buka cover dekat depan kamera tu. Macam mana you nak ambil gambar? So, sama. Kita kita uh, imagine kita punya mata. Katakan dalam mata ada um, uh, cataract. Selaput, selaput dalam mata. So, kanak-kanak pun boleh dapat selaput dalam mata. Right? Ataupun nombor dua, mungkin ada uh, droopy eyelid. Uh, mungkin dia punya kelopak mata tutup sedikit. So, ini kita panggil stimulus deprivation. Maksudnya, tak ada stimulus ke dalam mata. So, something is uh, blocking. So, yang ini pun boleh menyebabkan mata malas. So, bila the, the main thing in embryopia is what happen is you punya... Um, Kamera tu tak berfungsi dengan bagus. Tetapi kita kena tahu ya, dalam mata malas ni bila kita tengok dari luar, semuanya nampak okey. So, mata nampak okey saja dari luar. Kita pun tak tahu dia ada mata malas. Melainkan bila kita test uh, mata tersebut. So, tiga punca uh, untuk conclude balik tiga punca yang boleh menyebabkan uh, mata malas. Main thing is kita punya rabun. Okay, rabun jauh ataupun rabun dekat ataupun power silau. Nombor dua, mungkin kalau ada juling. Nombor tiga, mungkin ada apa-apa penyakit mata seperti cataract ataupun selaput ataupun penyakit-penyakit yang lain. 
uh, saya rasa di sini. Uh, I mean that's all for now. Okay, thank you so much. Very clear cut. Uh, the the three reason just now uh, is uh, rabun. Uh, any types of rabun kan, uh, Prakash? Rabun silau, hmm. rabun jauh, yep. rabun dekat. All of this can cause yep. uh, embolia. Uh, Juling, you know, uh, squeen, and then uh, of course. Uh, There's many types, many many diseases that can cause a uh, blockage of a uh, uh, cahaya, the lights entering into the eyes, and uh, this also can cause uh, amblyopia, uh, lazy eyes. So that's very clear. Uh, before we proceed on who is at risk, because the next question I'm going to ask uh, JY, but uh, I see there's uh, one comment related to uh, your answer just now, uh, Mr. Prakash, uh, which uh, was asked by. Mr. Terry Liu, uh, and mm -hmm. he 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 asked about um, normally for lazy eyes, power is higher than another eyes, right? So basically, what he he mean or he asks is that uh, from his understanding that uh, mata malas ni ialah keadaan di mana power belah kanan ataupun power belah kiri salah satu power mata tu tinggi lagi daripada mata satu lagi I means satu tinggi satu rendah is that is that really uh, is that really the cause or is that the definition of amblyopia perhaps Ahmad or Prakash can can enlighten uh, this uh, maybe Boleh. saya share dulu it's actually a ah. misconception kita panggil bila power tinggi kita panggil mata tu malas tidak uh, power boleh tinggi Okey, katakan power seni 700, power seni 100. Tetapi bila kita dah betulkan pada peringkat awal, you know, when the baby is born and then kita dapat tahu bila kita check pada peringkat sangat awal dan kita dah betulkan, kita dah bagi cermin. So power tinggi berapa pun, kita masih boleh elakkan uh, lazy eye. That is not the lazy eye. Lazy eye biasanya disebabkan power tinggi ni boleh berlaku bila kita tak betulkan, bila kita tak bagi cermin. So macam tadi saya, saya kata mata ni 100, power dia mata ni 700. So bermaksud tanpa cermin mata, mata ni boleh nampak dengan bagus. Tetapi mata ni tak nampak bagus. So bila kita tak betulkan pada peringkat yang lebih muda, when we are not correcting, uh, I mean when we are not giving the glasses or correcting the uh, power at very younger age, then the eye with the higher power berisiko untuk jadi mata malas. Yep. JY and Ahmad, okay. you want to add anything? Yep. Okay. Hmm. Kalau Sampai. saya pula, saya biasa biasa dapat soalan macam ni. Uh, biasa macam, yelah datang-datang kata, uh, power saya tinggi sebelah lah. Uh, power saya tinggi sebelah tinggi, sebelah rendah. So dia kata, ada satu kedai tu kata, mata yang tinggi ni uh, mata malas lah. Sebenarnya benda ni salah konsep sebenarnya. Kalau mata malas ni, kita dah kata tadi uh, penglihatan satu mata tu tak dapat penglihatan terbaik 6 per 6. Sekiranya uh, yang dekat luar sana ada masalah ni, ini sebenarnya bukan mas mata malas. Ini kita panggil anisometropia. Uh, di mana uh, power mata kiri dan mata kanan tidak sama. Ataupun uh, apa ni jarak uh, perbezaan tu terlalu tinggi. Perbezaan dia terlalu jauh. Uh, dia tidak hampir sama. Jadi yang ini kita panggil anisometropia, bukannya mata malas. Uh, itu daripada saya, Syuk. Okay. And JY, any, any, anything to add before I ask you the next question? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with Prakash. What he said is definitely right. Uh, it's about our eyes is like a camera. It's like a lens. So if there is a high power, the lens is blurred. So the stimulus cannot go into our brain and transmit the information. And that's why when our brain has used the better eye to see clear, our brain will choose to use the good eye, the bad eye that will usually neglect it. So it's a natural selection kind of things that we want to see clear. We choose the good eyes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you, Ahmad. Uh, thank you, uh, JY. So the next question is about uh, who can get amblyopia? Who is at risk? Uh, I sometimes comes across people yang umur 30, 40 tahun dia datang dan dia cakap uh, uh, this person says to me that uh, oh, I have lazy eye. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious uh, and very, very 
careful when I do a examinations, I examination on this uh, kind of persons. So actually, who is at risk of getting uh, like lazy eyes, uh, JY? And um, what, who is, you know, can, can be defined that, uh, you know, having amblyopia? Is there a certain age that can get amblyopia or, you know, can this amblyopia uh, remain until you get uh, older? Uh, so, hmm. yeah, please enlighten. Yeah, actually, it happens on me as well. Some adults tell me, you know, that he has amblyopia. It happens because, not because that he just get the amblyopia. It's because it's a cumulative kind of situations when he actually got this amblyopia since he was very young and he never realized it. So usually this only happens for kids. Like what uh, Mr. Prakash has shared is uh, since we were born, we start to have problems with the eyes. So if you leave it untreated, the amblyopia can be a permanent condition. Even though after you grow up until 2040s, the amblyopia will be there forever. That's why we always say, you know, get your eyes, get your kids' eyes checked since you're beginning of three years old to five years old. So yeah, it happens on adults, but most likely it happens on children. And it happens on adults only if the children's eyes left untreated. Then it can cause uh, permanent situations. And that conditions, we usually call it as a low vision. So it happens to my friends. I can share more about my uh, one story. My friend is 28 years old. He has a uh, one eye is seeing clear. One eye is his power about 700. So the 700 eye is a very uh, high power and the good eye actually no power. So this, uh, my friend actually never get the, his eye treated 20 years back. So the Mbappia has been there for 20 years. So it, it has now become a low vision and it become a permanent case. So now he has no guarantee anymore. One eye left, so he has to take good care of the good eyes. Lah. So the reason we have two eyes is because eyes is so important that we need a spare part. <laughs> we need a spare for us to see clear. So one eye is getting injured, we have a spare. So yeah. So it usually happens on kids most of the time, but if you live untreated, it can happen on adults as well. Back to I you, see. Mr. Shukri. Thank you, JY. So now, now is more clearer uh, on that uh, basically it, it it actually started at at younger age you know at younger age uh, as early as you know babies uh, can can start getting uh, amblyopia if not treated with uh, what prakash mentioned just now diseases or uh, rabo tinggi or squints you know so and if not treated not managed well uh, basically i i understand uh, the management later uh, will be taught by uh, uh, Ahmad as well as uh, JY yourself. Uh, we will we, we will talk about that later. Uh, but before that, um, uh, we know now that uh, children mostly going to get amblyopia. And I want to ask the next questions to Prakash. Um, what is the sign or symptoms that you know parents can see or look at? Uh, know that their child uh, is having an uh, issue or having these uh, lazy eyes, uh, Prakash. Okay, thanks, Shukri. Um, as I said, um, the main cause is the power, right? When you have a short sightedness or long sightedness or astigmatism, that is not corrected. So um, it's very rare that we can actually name, oh, kalau jadi macam ni, ini adalah mata malas. Tak, mata malas ni kita dapat tahu bila uh, kita bawa uh, kita punya anak pergi jumpa optometris, you know, uh, ataupun pakar, you know, pakar penglihatan. Kita ni sebagai pakar penglihatan optometris. So, bila kita berjumpa, bila kita buat test, baru kita dapat tahu, oh dia ada mata malas, okay. Uh, dari segi, sebenarnya dia bergantung pada rabun jauh kita, okay. So, sama kalau katakan you ada rabun jauh, kalau you realize uh, your kids is actually watching TV at a very close distance. Kita selalu marah kita punya anak. Don't go close, don't go close. But we need to think, what makes them to go very close to the TV? You know, saya pernah nampak banyak parents yang complain. Saya dah marah dia banyak kali, dia tak still nak pergi dekat. Tapi bila kita check, kita dapat tahu memang rabun jauh dia tinggi. So kalau dari jauh dia tak nampak. That's why the, the child is actually going close. 
So bila kita check, oh okay ada rabun jawa and then kita dah bagi glasses. So bila kita dah bagi glasses, then you boleh marah anak you. Kalau katakan anak you masih lagi pergi dekat dekat TV, then kita boleh marah. So bermaksud dekat sini memang science tu sebagai kita, I mean uh, public sebagai parents, memang you susah nak detect sama ada anak you ada lazy eye or not. Sebab yang jenis jenis MLP yang paling ketara adalah disebabkan rabun jauh ataupun rabun dekat ataupun silau yang terlalu tinggi. So petanda yang petanda apa uh, the signs of amblyopia that is caused by the short sightedness it's very difficult to be determined unless uh, you bring your children for the eye examination. Kedua, kalau katakan you rasa macam mata anak you uh, tak berapa straight. It doesn't look straight. You seem like uh, your child is having cross eyes. Yeah, so that could also lead to amblyopia. So, kalau cepat-cepat you nampak itu, you kena cepat bawa. And again, some small deviation. Angle, uh, screen, juling-juling yang kecil sebenarnya memang uh, orang luar sebagai orang yang biasa. Memang you tak boleh detect. Okay. And nombor tiga. Nombor tiga seperti mana yang saya kata disebabkan selaput dalam mata. Ha? So kanak-kanak dia tak akan komplain Dia tak akan komplain uh, Oh mak saya tak nampak Kanak-kanak memang tak akan komplain Sebab kanak-kanak ingat Saya nampak memang macam ni Dia ingat maybe semua orang nampak macam tu Ataupun kalau kanak-kanak ada apa-apa masalah Dia tak akan bagi tahu. Seperti yang saya bagi tahu, Lazy eye bila kita tengok dari luar mata Semuanya nampak normal So bermaksud di sini Apa yang saya nak uh, tekankan dekat sini Memang uh, Signs of amblyopia Is not very significant cannot be significantly observed by the parents. So, di, sebab, di situlah kita perlu tekankan berapa pentingnya untuk bawa anak-anak kita ke uh, untuk jumpa optometris seawal yang mungkin. Seboleh-bolehnya uh, paling awal 6 bulan selepas uh, seseorang bayi itu lahir. Hmm. So, setakat right. tu je. Thank you, uh, Prakash. Uh, again, I, I, I have uh, another question from uh, Mr. Terry Liu. It's related to your, your, your answer, Prakash. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I guess uh, Mr. Terry Liu still a bit confused about what is myopia and the difference between amblyopia from, from what I see there. Uh, he's facing lots of problems, especially like kids. They, they and their parents don't know eyes got myopia problems. So like you just mentioned just now, uh, Prakash, uh, definitely the kids will not have any issues. Uh, we'll, we'll see whatever they see, that, that, that thing that's, that's normal. They don't feel blur or they didn't think uh, blur is something that they recognize because perhaps they, see, they think that their uh, friends, you know, their parents is seeing the same thing as what they see. Mm -hmm. but, but actually they are seeing blur. Uh, perhaps... Um, you can enlighten, uh, can 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 uh, tell a little bit. What was the difference between uh, myopia and amblyopia, and can can myopia uh, cause amblyopia, uh, Prakash? Uh, as I said, myopia is a refractive error. But if you have corrected earlier, let's say you have already given a glasses or whatsoever, you have already corrected the myopia at the younger age then chances of you developing uh, amblyopia or lazy eye is very less. Okay? So like this, you said your, your child, uh, I mean, you're having power of 200 on the right eye, 100 on the left eye. If you correct the, 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 the power at the very younger age, so you're letting the eye, you're letting your camera to see clearly. That means you won't develop lazy eye. Let's say if you don't wear glasses until the age of maybe 10 or 12 years old, and... The, you're bringing your kid uh, of this power to see an optometrist at the age of 12. So then there's high chances of developing lazy eye or amblyopia, which we will assume the right eye will go into amblyopia because in this case, right eye is weaker than the left eye. The left eye is actually seeing clearly without the glasses. Yep. So uh, just we, we can't just define uh, we can't just define amblyopia based on the power. So again, I'm I, I I wanted to focus here. I wanted all of you to understand. High power doesn't mean that you are having lazy eye. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Faham? So ingat eh rakan-rakan para pendengar penonton dekat luar sana Rabun yang tinggi bukan bermaksud anda ada mata malas Rabun yang tinggi tidak bermaksud anda ada mata malas Mata malas ni adalah keadaan apabila uh, seseorang itu tak boleh nampak uh, sesuatu yang kecil, objek yang kecil, tulisan yang kecil especially bila kita check dengan catah huruf tak nampak tu walaupun kita dah bagi cermin mata, bantuan untuk uh, melihat dengan baik tapi still tak boleh nampak uh, so the, the issue is with the hubungan antara mata dengan otak ya, uh, hubungan untuk translate tu uh, the connection tu so rabun yang tinggi uh, adalah kemungkinan menjadi penyebab uh, the cause of epilepsy mata malas tapi it itself not uh, mata malas so need to understand that, that definition thank you uh, prakash for that okay uh, when we talk about rabun tadi rabun uh, rabun jauh myopia uh, of course we will talk, we need to talk about glasses or contact lens or whatever nak 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 bantu untuk melihat dengan lebih baik so uh, my next questions to ahmad is um, Adakah cermin mata betul-betul boleh menyembuhkan atau membantu seseorang yang mempunyai mata malas? So, betul. Betul. Dia boleh membantu. Sama ada cermin mata ataupun kantar sentuh. Di mana kita kena tahu uh, power yang tinggi ni kita nak tengok sebenarnya kita nak assess dia adalah tahap penglihatan iaitu 6 per 6 vision yang terbaik 20 per 20, per 20. Ha, kita nak tengok yang tu kalau pakai cermin mata bila tak nampak 6 per 6 20 per 20 ha, itu mata tu memang menghadapi mata malas ha, bagilah power tinggi macam mana pun 100 ke 1000 ke dah memang itu power dia tapi dia tak bila pakai still tak nampak penglihatan terbaik jadi dia kena pakai cermin mata power yang uh, yang yang optimum yang power yang dia punya tu dia kena pakai dan kita akan assess pula penglihatan dia mungkin uh, sebulan akan datang kita nak tengok uh, penglihatan dia kalau boleh uh, bertambah baik asalnya mungkin uh, 12 ke 6 ke 12 dan akan turun jadi 6 ke 9 kita nak tengok ada progress peningkatan vision dia uh, power tak berubah tapi vision dia Penglihatan dia bertambah baik. Kita nak tengok penglihatan dia yang bertambah baik. Power tak akan berubah tapi penglihatan yang kita nak tengok dia bertambah baik. Ha, kita assess dia penglihatan. Ha, bukannya power. Ha, itu itu yang uh, mungkin uh, ramai kena faham lah sebenarnya. Uh, power tak tak menjadi masalah sebenarnya tapi penglihatan tu. Uh, dah bagi power yang tinggi dah optimum apa semua tapi Penglihatan masih tak dapat yang terbaik. Ha, kita nakkan penglihatan yang terbaik. Ha, itu saja daripada syuk. Memang cermin mata memang kena pakai. Memang membantu sebab benda ni kita nak nak selesaikan masalah M. Blyopia dia dulu. Disebabkan oleh apa? Saraf-saraf uh, kat retina tu tak tak dirangsang sebenarnya. So bila kita bagikan uh, power yang betul, yang optimum saraf-saraf tu baru dirangsang. Akan rasa macam kena tekan kena tekan ah macam tu. Ah uh, itu 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 yang kita nak kita nak buat sebenarnya. Baik, baik. So that's that's really good. Uh, basically uh, apa yang amat uh, ceritakan tadi adalah uh, cermin mata ataupun apa-apa alat bantuan melihat yang diberikan oleh optometrist uh, wajiblah digunakan ataupun dipakai. Kalau contohnya macam uh, optometrist dah detect seseorang kanak-kanak tu dah ada rabun jauh ataupun rabun dekat ataupun even rabun silok astigmatism uh, of course kena pakai sebab pertama pakai itu tujuannya untuk mengelakkan berlaku yang masalah sebab, sebab rabun rabun tu akan boleh menjadi penyebab kepada uh, mata malas tu nanti kalau tak dibetulkan kemudiannya kalau memang otomatis dah detect ada mata malas cermin mata ataupun alat bantu uh, yang diberikan contact lens atau uh, apa-apa yang diberikan otomatis tu memang wajib dipakai supaya untuk memberi kejelasan pada mata dan boleh bantu untuk uh, merawat uh, mata malas or is it I mean we going to ask the next questions to uh, JY uh, basically is 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 the only ways to treat uh, lazy eyes is through glasses uh, 
how we want how uh, optometrists manage uh, lazy eyes uh, JY can can it be treated okay Please thank you Su me. thank you Sukri so uh, how to treat lazy eye the key question is not about wearing glasses the key question is to be able to see clearly so that's why we need to treat the root of the cause instead of just giving glasses there there might be other reason like cataract like dueling matter screen eyes or even other things <clears throat> that can cause lazy eye so we need to treat the cause the root cause of the reason why we get the lazy eye so we always uh, always encourage patients to see optometrists because optometrists is going to check detailedly from the inside to outside to see what is the root cause of the reason that you got the lazy eye instead of just simply give you glasses and you pakai spec lah senang saja kita bagi you bagi wang saya bagi spec that is not the way the, the the way is to find out the reason and we find the the real real reason and we give the treatment on the spot so there are three ways of treating the the elite embarpias depending on the situations one of it is actually uh, do eye patching eye patching is about matter satu high power satu low power so we're gonna patch matter bagus lah so that to focus on the bad eye so our eyes will get stimulus we start working again then we we'll slowly you get uh, the stimulus to the eyes to the brain and then it start function just like our hand hello hand other that other must other uh, energy other and uh, no no not feeling strong we go work out work out the weak hand so that you can get a stronger hand so if let's say it's screen eye usually we refer to do the surgery but that is the final solution for the screen eye so we always based on the situations and then we give the uh, best treatments yeah so i hope that answer your question okay thank you so much uh dy so yeah uh, uh it really helps uh basically the 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 key points is that we need to seek uh, helps lah, kan? Uh, if we have uh, or our children have amblyopia and this treatment or this management cannot be done on your own kan? Uh, JY, it need to be prescribed or it need to be managed by optometrists uh, optometrists need to determine whether the eye patch is needed the glasses is needed or not or uh, whatever treatment vision therapy that 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 can be used uh, to to manage and treat uh, amblyopia. So, uh, but but I think the best thing is that it can be treated uh, if we detect the amblyopia uh, as early as possible. You know, because uh, if we treat or we manage uh, amblyopia lazy eyes at early age, then amblyopia have a success rates. You know, to to be cured. Uh, but if if the child, uh, we detect it uh, late, perhaps macam dah masuk sekolah menengah, baru kita tahu, oh, dia ada lazy eye, then it might be a little bit too late to be helped, you know, to 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 get uh, better 2020-66 vision. So, of course, uh, the one one point, the, the one point that is important is that uh, early detections. Um, and then um, another question when it comes to late detections, uh, lambat dapat detect uh, amblyopia ni adalah adakah dia menjadi punca kepada masalah lain? Sebagai contoh, orang cakap uh, bila ada mata malas, macam tadi kita mention dia boleh jadi penyebab rabun tinggi tapi ada juga orang cakap, oh uh, jadi mata malas boleh menyebabkan juling? Uh, adakah mata malas boleh menyebabkan mata seseorang sebab mata dia sebelah kan malas kan macam tak tak little bit blur compared to the other eye adakah mata yang malas tu akan akan juling so saya nak tanya soalan ni kepada Ahmad silakan Ahmad okey sebenarnya dua-dua tu boleh sebenarnya uh, mata uh, juling boleh menyebabkan mata malas itu satu uh, mata malas pun boleh menyebabkan juling juga sebab oh, apa okay. Okey sebab apa? Sebab contoh eh kita dah kita ada satu mata yang elok. Mata satu ni memang kita boleh fokus. Contoh eh mata ni memang boleh fokus pada satu satu objek yang jauh ataupun yang dekat. Kita boleh fokus. Maknanya mata tu memang boleh ikut apa arah yang kita nak tengoklah. 
Tapi bayangkan mati yang satu lagi ni yang tak elok ni memang dah kabur dah. Dia nak fokus kat mana. <laughs> dia pun tak nampak kat mana tempat yang objek sasaran tu yang dia nak fokus. Itu yang dikatakan uh, bila kita fokus, kita ingat dua-dua mata kita melihat pada tempat yang sama. Tapi sebenarnya ada satu mata tu dia tak fokus, kita tak sedar pun. So yang yang mata yang tak elok tu, yang mata malas tu kadang-kadang boleh uh, menyebabkan juling. Dia mungkin terkeluar sikit atau ke dalam. So juling ni pula ada angle-angle dia pula. Uh, yang tu satu. Dan bila yang kedua pula juling menyebabkan mata malas sebab kita yang juling ni dia dah dah terkeluar, tak boleh nak fokus kan. Uh, yang itu yang penyebab kepada mata malas. Ha. Sebab dua-dua tu pun boleh menjadi. So dua-dua pun betul sebenarnya Syuk. Uh, jadi berbalik kepada uh, asal dia kita mesti uh, rawat dia punya punca kuasa dia, akar dia kat mana. Uh, kerosakan dia ni kat mana. Uh, dari situ kita kita rawat. Jadi uh, nasihat saya memang uh, kepada pendengar luar sana memang kalau boleh berjumpa lah dengan optometris maknanya optometris ni insyaAllah boleh bagi tahu. Ha, kalau kedai cengah mata mungkin ada yang tak ada optometris mungkin tak boleh nak bagi tahu secara detail tahu-tahu je dia suruh pergi hospital sebabnya dia tak boleh nak selesaikan masalah ha, pesakit-pesakit ni yang ada ha, kita katakan special condition lah keadaan yang special ha, itu saja dari saya Syuk Baik, thank you so much Ahmad so uh mata malas dengan juling ni dia berkaitan mata malas boleh menjadi penyebab kepada juling, juling boleh menjadi penyebab kepada mata malas uh, so kita semua kena faham tu basically of course again the importance of eye examination budak-budak, early detection so kanak-kanak, ibu bapa please bring your child uh, to see optometrist uh, to get early um, eye examinations You know, right, Prakas mentioned just now, as early as six months old or even if you have difficulty to bring them at early age, uh, perhaps you can bring them as early as when they're able to read. You know, able to read at four years old, five years old or when they start preschool. So that will be good if you bring them for uh, to see optometrists and uh, do some basic eye examinations to see whether they have any difficulty uh, seeing. And uh, just now, we mentioned about Uh, amblyopia can cause uh, screen and I would like to know whether amblyopia can cause other problems. So these questions I want to pass to JY. Uh, can amblyopia leads to any eye diseases, penyakit-penyakit mata boleh jadi buta ke ni? Uh, JY, please, silakan. <coughs> yeah, okay, thank you Shukri. So yes, amblyopia if you live untreated, can cause other problems. A very common problem is the children has lost attention to the learning. This is what, because children never tell. Children dia tak pakai tahu, semasa dia tak nampak. Never tell parents. So that can cause further uh, deterioration of the eyes. So last time, because we don't have a very good health system, Malaysia, we are kind of like Susana Tengo. We didn't talk about aut- automatic. Optician pun Susana Jumpa sebenarnya. 10, 20 years back. But today is different. Our world is changing. Now we have better technologies. We have more professional in the country. So we should avoid incidents like this. So like the story I shared just now, one of my friends has low vision due to the untreated and bias. These kind of things shouldn't happen anymore in Malaysia. Especially we have such a good facilities and support from all parties. Like us, AMO is uh, one of the parties who actually always uh, create awareness to the public. So as a parents, we should love our children by not just buying them the toys, by loving their eyes. Like just the uh, same as our teams for the World Side Day this year. So love your eyes, love your child by loving their eyes. So as yeah, that's my advice to the parents out there. You need to take good care of your eyes and your par- your children's eyes because your children, they tak akan pakai tau. Selama ni dia they just lost of attention to learn. Suddenly they sit in front of the TV. Suddenly they don't want to listen to the teacher. It's all due to the vision. You never know. Instead of buying them the toys, you can try to buy this thing. Go to see automatrix. Instead of watching the Squid yes, Game, <laughs> this is the chart that helps to uh, helps children to check their visions. So 
it's a trend right now. So yeah, if you want your children to be interested to go to iCheck, maybe you can see, start look for optometrists. Pass back to you, Mr. Shukri. Thank you. Okay, thank you, JY. So that's very clear. Um, of course, we don't want to to cause difficulty for you know to cause our children's future to you know to to become bleak, you know, uh, menjadi suram masa depan menjadi suram because of untreated amblyopia. Sebab uh, rawatan amblyopia tu ada uh, boleh dibantu. Uh, as long as the eye diseases is managed uh, correctly, then the amblyopia can be managed by optometrist. Then once uh, amblyopia is managed, treated, then the children will have will uh, can and able to perform better in schools, you know, and have better socials and communication, communicate better with their friends, with their colleagues. Uh, and of course, kita sebagai parents nak bagi yang terbaik kepada anak-anak kita. So that's very important. Uh, for all of us, uh, parents out there, uh, bring your children uh, to see optometrist uh, to do eye examinations. Uh, macam Mr. Ahmad uh, selalu laung-laungkan uh, setiap tahun, yearly eye examinations. Okay, so um, uh, okay, the last question for tonight and uh, thank you uh, JY, uh, tadi mentioned about World Sight Day. Ya, uh, untuk pengetahuan semua dekat luar sana, kita akan menyambut uh, Hari Penglihatan Sedunia, World Sight Day tomorrow. Ya, yeah, untuk tahun 2021, uh, World Sight Day ni adalah hari Kamis uh, minggu kedua bulan Oktober setiap tahun. So tahun ini jatuh pada esok hari 14 Oktober dan uh, tema tahun ini adalah Love Your Eyes. Ya, yeah, sayangi mata anda. So a little bit of trivia dekat situ. Thank you JY for giving a heads up. Uh, so back to our topic today about lazy eyes ni. Uh, the last question I'm going to 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 ask uh, Prakash, Mr. Prakash. Uh, just now we mentioned about treatments, you know. We mentioned about uh, signs and symptoms and causes. Uh, I want to know about the prevention, you know, early prevention. How how we can you know uh, prevent amblyopia from uh, happening, and mm -hmm. who can you know can can help. Uh, parents and children with uh, yep. uh, with uh, those with lazy eyes or even before they get lazy eyes. Yep. Uh, thanks, Shukri. So uh, before we go into that, the prevention, I would like to share something. Uh, just now I said, right, the eye and the brain, it's like a system. So we say until the child coming up to the age of about 10 to 12, the system is like a plastic, you know, a soft plastic where can, you can actually reshape. If there's any problem, you can always reshape to make it straight. But after the age of uh, 10 or 12, we said uh, plastic to the jadi keras. You cannot reshape, you know. So why I'm telling you this is, remember I said you have to uh, detect the amblyopia as soon as possible. So bila uh, kita dapat tahu anak you ada katakan mata malas, you jumpa, I mean, you're bringing your ch child to say an optometrist, and the optometrist is telling that you're having a lazy eye. So as long as your child's age is less than 10 or 12, you've got a very good chance to treat it. Di mana, the first option itu kita bagi dia cermin mata. Kita nak betulkan dia punya rabun jauh. So bila kita dah betulkan, brain kita ni, kita punya otak akan anggap, oh actually kita boleh nampak lebih bagus. So what we are trying to do is we reshape the plastic to be in straight line again, you know. Tetapi bila katakan dah umur 12 ke atas, plastik dia dah keras sedikit. So it's a bit difficult to treat. It is treatable tapi uh, chances, I mean uh, keberkesanan treatment tu tak berapa uh, bagus. So kenapa saya bagi tahu ni? Cara kita nak cegah. Cara kita nak cegah, the only way is by getting your eyes checked as early as possible. You know, by the optometrist. So again, I would like to share, uh, you may think that you punya anak baru umur 2 tahun and then dia tak kenal huruf. Dia tak kenal huruf. So, kalau saya bawa dia check, uh, kalau saya bawa dia pergi jumpa optometrist, how the optometrist is going to test the eyes? We don't worry about that. We have thousands of methods, you know, to test your eyes, your child's eyes, like what Tuan Shukri is showing. We can even check vision in a 6 months baby. We can even check vision in one year old baby. 
whatever the age of the child we can still check you know so uh, don't worry whether uh, your baby can see or not whether your baby understand our instruction or not we as an optometrist you know the optometrist we have thousands of ways we have various methods how to check your vision and then we can detect uh, whether the child is having blepia or not so i would say the prevention is uh, of course um, uh what do you call that eye exam early eye exam kalabolis town skali atapon vulnerable children katakan uh, your child has any issues like developmental issues katakan uh, lahir premature pramatang eh? lahir terlalu awal ataupun berat badan tak cukup uh, all these babies are we call vulnerable so kalau vulnerable you need to get the eyes checked as well okay so uh, siapa yang boleh tolong bila you ada lazy eye, siapa yang perlu tolong? So, uh, setengah problem, uh, most of the problem, optometrist boleh tolong. You know, kalau lazy eye disebabkan rabun jauh, kita boleh tolong, optometrist. Kalau katakan rabun jauh disebabkan juling, juling ni ada beberapa jenis. Juling, setengah juling, optometrist boleh betulkan hanya dengan pakai cermin ataupun bagi pris, uh, prism ataupun bagi eye exercise. Setengah juling yang terlalu besar memerlukan operasi. Dan bila perlukan operasi, kita perlukan bantuan pakar bedah mata. You know, the ophthalmologist. So, you need to get the help from them. Or, kalau katakan you ada cataract. Okay, so cataract ni memang perlukan bantuan ophthalmologist juga. So, di mana kita boleh tengok di sini, optometrist and ophthalmologist bekerja sekali. We are working together. And we can refer each other. You know, so that's the importance that you need to see an optometrist. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, other than that, prevention, uh, like normal, lah. I mean, uh, reduce your hours with gadgets, you know, and then eat proper diet and so on. Uh, dan di sini juga saya nak ambil kesempatan, uh, Shukri, sebab Shukri bagi tahu yeah. ta, tadi, tomorrow we'll be celebrating World Sight Day, right? Yes. And in Malaysia, we have this, uh, our association, AMO. We will be having a national eye health awareness campaign. All right. So, memang setiap tahun kita buat lah. We call it NEHA, NEHA 2021. So, this year we're trying to do something different. Sebab it has to be virtual kan disebabkan pandemic. So, kita fokus pada tiga benda. Okay, kita ada tiga main thing that kita nak fokus pada NEHA ni. Yang pertama kita nak tengok uh, children's eye health, you know. Uh, kesihatan mata kanak-kanak Nombor kedua kita nak tengok Digital eye strain sebab kita semua work from home Work on computers So memang kita semua terdedah kepada Risiko digital eye strain And nombor ketiga ramai yang pakai Kanta lekap contact lens You akan terfikir selamat tak saya pakai contact lens Semasa covid ni Boleh tak saya dapat covid kalau saya pakai contact lens So kita tekankan tiga-tiga benda ni Haa uh, Cara public untuk dapat benefit daripada kita punya Neha ni, uh, join kita punya live uh, forum, Facebook forum yang kita akan buat setiap Kamis bermula daripada esok. So, kita punya program pertama bermula esok pukul 8, 8 malam di Facebook. Facebook yang anda tengah tengok sekarang ni. So, esok pukul 8 kita ada uh, 3 atau 4 panelis, ya, optometris yang sangat berpengalaman yang akan bercerita berkenaan dengan Kesihatan mata kanak-kanak Which is again coming to Lazy eye or amblyopia So kita ada empat pakai yang lain So saya minta kita punya penonton Untuk uh, you know tune in To our Facebook on tomorrow hmm. That's all Thanks Shukri Okay thank you uh, Prakash So uh, yeah uh, Thank you for the information just now uh, Prakash about uh, The World Sight Day punya celebration by Association of Malaysian Optometrists, AMO. AMO going to organize a National Eye Health Awareness Campaign. We already started this campaign back in 2018 or 2016, if I'm not mistaken. So we do it continuously, yearly, uh, annually. But this year, our, te- our team is uh, eyes under lockdown. Am I right, uh, Prakash? Eyes are under lockdown and you're going uh, to focus on uh, children eye health. Um, digital eye strain as well as contact lens in uh, pandemic in COVID. So that's really good. Uh, and yeah, um, please for all the audiences, for all the listeners uh, tonight, uh, see us uh, MO 
uh, through our forum, Neha forums, uh, on Thursday night at 8 p.m. So tune in and uh, learn about uh, all of these uh, situations uh, when it comes for uh, ice under lockdown, all these conditions that's happening around us, about, uh, on our eyes. So thank you for that information, Prakash. Um, do you want to mention about uh, other event perhaps? Uh, do you want to, you know, I, I, I believe there's uh, some event that is very interesting. Uh, I think it's a treasure hunt or yeah, something maybe like that. Yeah, yeah. Tuan Ahmad, do you want to share? Hmm. Silakan. Silakan, Prakash. Okay, so uh, event kita ada live forum kan yang setiap Kamis we're going to have we're going to have three weeks. Uh, th three weeks, okay, three Thursdays. That one you can join on our Facebook. And then we also have Instagram challenge, uh, basic things, okay. You go to our Facebook page, you will see what are the instructions. So you just take some photos that is related to our campaign. You just post it with your uh, with the taglines. You have high chances of winning prizes, okay. And the third one, the most interesting event that we're going to have is Mungkin ada semua pernah tengok, um, you know, treasure hunt. Treasure hunt, actually, you need to, you know, run with your team, you know, looking for things and so on. But have you heard about online treasure hunt? So we're going virtual. to have online, yeah, virtual treasure hunt. You virtual don't have to go out. Hunt. You just sit in your room with your team, uh, maximum four in a team, all right? So you sit in a team, you'll be answering some questions. You'll be going through the Google map, okay? Uh, and then you're going to like, we will see who can get the most uh, right answers within the short period of time. Uh, so those will be the winners, okay? So um, we encourage you to participate this treasure hunt, okay? Uh, you run untuk masuk treasure hunt is 120 ringgit, if not mistaken. Per team. But for... Uh, per team, yeah, per team, and early bird, early bird rate is hundred ringgit. Can you know yeah. yeah. So early bird rate is hundred ringgit. Early bird rate will end in another one week time. Okay, and kita punya treasure hunt will be done on thirtieth October. And whether you win or not, for the first three hundred uh, teams, you will get a gift of hundred ringgit. <laughs> Right, so that means wow. whatever you pay, you're going to win back. You know, yeah. Uh, that is only for the first 300 teams. So uh, I would like to encourage you guys to join. And remember, this is not only for the optometrists. This is for public. Anyone, yep. anyone can join our virtual treasure hunt. Yep. So for more details, please look look for it onto our Facebook page, AMO Facebook page, or you can even go to our website. Okay. Yep. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prakash, for that information. I am very excited about uh, this year AMO uh, World Site Day celebrations. All these events, uh, treasure hunt online. Wow, uh, very very interesting. Uh, as well as the forums, uh, I think mesti banyak ilmu knowledge that will be shared by the panelists during the forums, uh, as well as the Instagram challenge. Uh, kena serta ini. Uh, so all the public. Uh, Orang anda semua dekat luar sana, uh, please join. Uh, semua informasi berkenaan treasure hunt, berkenaan forum, berkenaan Instagram challenge dapatkan de uh, maklumat dekat website AMO www.amo.org.my ataupun visit our uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can type Association of Malaysian Optometrists uh, AMO dekat dalam uh, Facebook search tu and you can jumpa our page, uh, then all the information is inside the Facebook page. All right, so uh, that's a little bit of selingan, eh? berkenaan kita punya World Site Day. Uh, thank you, Prakash. Thank you, Ahmad. And as well as uh, to you, JY. Uh, so basically, back to our topic tonight is about uh, embryopia, uh, mata malas. Uh, I nak jemput, uh, mungkin uh, JY, you ada a little bit of, you know, um, Last words, uh, you know, to to pesan to our audience about lazy mm. eyes, perhaps. Okay. Last word, <laughs> last word means love your eyes, love your children, and love your life. And to love your eyes, you means you need to go to see optometrist, and to get your eyes checked on yearly basis. Yeah, that's all uh, I can share, and that's all we can encourage our beloved uh, uh, audience 
who is listening listening tonight. Thank you. Thank you, JY. And Ahmad, Ahmad, last one, last one. Okay, last one. Selamat hari uh, penglihatan sedunia. Love your eyes. Uh, jumpa optometris sekurang-kurangnya setahun sekali untuk apa pemeriksaan mata. Pastikan anda berjumpa dengan optometris eh? setahun sekali, sekurang-kurangnya tu. Uh, macam apa yang uh, dentist dua tahun sekali. Tapi optometris mata ni setahun sekali. Baik, baik. Thank you so much. Um, uh, sebenarnya kita ada a few other comments dekat dekat Facebook tu. Uh, macam Mr. Kiki Go uh, ada mention sebab uh, soalan ni. Uh, Mr. Terry Liu pun ada a few other questions tapi uh, macam soalan untuk Mr. Kiki Go tu. Uh, I think uh, it's not, um, we are we are not uh, someone yang you can uh, ask and we we can answer your questions. It will be better, much much better and proper to uh, ask these questions to your optometrist. So, of course, uh, go and see an optometrist outside uh, and uh, this optometrist will will be able to answer your questions uh, better and through proper examinations. And Mr. Terry as well, uh, if able to, I will try to, to answer these questions later through the chat room as well. Okay, so I think we already exit our time usually we we online for about half an hour but tonight because it's gonna be world side day so uh, tomorrow so a little bit extra time for us uh, and thank you again to our panelists uh, to mr prakash to jy to ahmad for being here tonight thank you so much and uh, thank you to all the listeners to all the audience for watching us uh, and please do share this uh, video uh, to all of your friends, families, you know, colleagues, so that uh, they can get benefits uh, for uh, about MWPR or lazy eyes. And we're going to see you uh, in two weeks time, uh, 27 of October, with the topic of squeeing, uh, juling. But tadi kita pun ada mention about MWPR and juling. So next topic is about juling, squeeing. So we're going to see you in, in two weeks time. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, have a good uh, night, everyone. Uh, thank you, Supri. Wish you all the best. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Okay, terima kasih.